What is up guys? Welcome back to part 15 of this WordPress for beginners tutorial series. Today what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on contact seven and uh, just make a contact form for our website. So as you remember from the last one, when we left off, we kind of had this boring, well, it's not really that boring now, but it just, we haven't really changed anything. I actually kind of changed this a little bit in that off, off screen, but uh, the rest of it's all the same from when you saw it last. I also think I removed a section, uh, like a testimonial section, but um, this is our site for right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up adding a contact us page here. We're gonna add a contact form and then we're gonna configure it a little bit. That's what we're gonna do in this video. So just to get started right away, uh, I wanna go to the, I have all these different tabs open because there's quite a few things I wanna show you. So if you remember after we installed contact seven in our plugins, it added this here and this little fly out, which has integrations, adding new and a contact forms. And it already comes with one contact contact form pre-made. And if you remember from before, uh, I talked about short codes a little bit. WordPress has the ability internally to take code between brackets like this, which isn't traditional uh, HTML or anything like that, and uh, execute something inside WordPress or what they call hook into a, a certain function based on uh, what this is calling for. So in this case, this actually will put out the contact form that's created inside this contact, this this code will output whatever contact form has been configured through here. So let's hit edit on this. This is just like doing a page or a post. And so we get into here and uh, I've already added a few extra fields, but I'll show you how to do that. So when you first get into here, it asks you for what you want on your form. And as you can see, you have text, email, URL, telephone, uh, tell a number and date and text area. Text area is a big text area like this. Text is just one of the regular size text boxes. Uh, check boxes where the user can select multiple check boxes. Radio buttons, they can only select one. Acceptance, this is for terms and conditions. Acceptance, quiz, uploading a file, and a submit button. So by default, the form will always, uh, Generally, the one that comes with Contact Form 7 will have the user's name, their email, a subject, and a message. And the star right here uh, inside these uh, brackets indicates that it's a required field. So the name's required, email's required. And this kind of looks confusing, I understand that, and that's because there's a few things going on here. Uh, the way that this sets up forms is actually pretty cool. It uses a combination of some interface editing and um, some code editing, but I wouldn't be too scared of it. So, for example, this website URL right here, I added this and I added pick a car, and I made a car list, and I added a 70 Roadrunner, a 31 Model A, a 41 COE, and a 93 RX-7. And I made it so the user is required to pick a car. Now we know it's required because after the opening tag of what this input is, it has a star. And you'll ask, okay, well, let's say we wanted to create a text field under the website. Well, the way that you order it in the form is you click into here and you go down here and let's add some lines. And so now we have a space to enter a new text box. Let's do a, another basic text box. So you click the text and now we have the ability to make it required, name it, give it a default value and uh, an ID and a class. Both of these are used for CSS styling this uh, to look differently on the front end of your site to make the font bigger or give it a border or anything like that. Uh, Akismet, this is for uh, requiring the author's name. This is for anti-spam measures. And we're not gonna do that in this one, but we uh, could do it in the future. And so let's say we wanna make this a required field and see how it's telling you what the tag's gonna look like. This is the little tag it generates, and this is just for inside Contact Form 7. It uses these tags to determine what, uh, to make it a field, to output a field. So let's name it something that we would know or what we would understand. You're gonna see why this is important in a second. So for the name, let's go ahead and call this, uh, let's go ahead and just call this, uh, let's see, let's ask them for, uh, I know it's really random, but let's just ask them for a movie, like favorite movie or something. We're not gonna give it a default value and the field's gonna be named movie. So when we insert that, you see it inserted it where our cursor was inside here, but you still need a label because a label is what tells the user what the field is and if it's required. So we wanna copy this and then make another line and paste it in. Now in HTML, there's something called tags. If you've never seen it before, tags have an opening tag open with the uh, greater and less than signs. And then it has a closing tag with the greater and less than signs with a forward slash before the name of what the tag is. So in H1, it would be H1 and then H1 with this before it. And then in between is what's in your header one, like that big header that gets put out on your site. And that's the tag for the header one. So in this case, it's a label tag that surrounds our input field. In this case, it's a, uh, a text box and it has some text telling the user what to do. So let's just say favorite movie. Okay, now we've added a required field asking the user for their favorite movie. 
we will go for that for the moment. Okay, and so now that we've had that, we can actually go out to our pages. We can go pages, add new, and that'll give us take us to here, or if we just go actually to view all our pages, it'll take us to here. And I already created a contact page, but I'm gonna go ahead and edit it anyway and show you what I did. So in the contact page, I just created the title of contact us, and by default, since there was no contact us page built, it gave it the slug of contact dash us. So that's our contact us page. And then I gave it over on the right hand side, if you recall, you have all these little document or all these little things you can do to your site, like your permalink, see it's just contact us. You can change it to whatever you want right here. Uh, featured image, we're not gonna use any of that, but page attributes, the template. And I was telling you about how different themes have different templates that they can use by default. Uh, and they come preloaded from the author. And then also we can actually create more of these ourselves uh, and give our own layouts and everything and create our own widget areas and everything. That's a little more advanced and I'll probably show that in a future uh, series. But for now we're just gonna leave it the default template because we don't want it to be look just like the front page or anything. We want it just to be a regular page. And then in here, inside your physical uh, block and body of your site, guess what you put in? The short code that we received from right here inside this or when you looked out here at the overall, this is the editor so it's at the top when you're editing, but in here, it's right here. So uh, when we output that onto our contact page back here and we update it and it's now in there and it's calling to that contact form and we view the page, we now have a contact page and if we scroll, oh look, here's our fields. We have a name, email, website, favorite movie, a car, and a subject, and a message. Now, if we try to send this, this is a very important, if you try to do this on a local host and you do not have SMTP enabled, it will fail. It can't, con your local host is not capable of sending actual emails out on the internet unless it's hooked up to an SMTP, which is beyond the scope of this because when we move it to a real server, this is gonna start working anyway off your server's email, uh, SMTP and sending service. So you're not gonna need to do this uh, for this particular lesson because we don't really need to send any emails from the local host right now. Because we know that this will in fact work when we upload it to an actual server. I hope that makes sense. Localhost is just for you to see. So while you can edit it and all this stuff, it's not gonna be able to send real emails out. So. Uh, but that's the basics of that. And so in this contact form, you can do anything you want. You can add anything you want um, in the way of, like I said, numbers and dates and text areas and all kinds of stuff and uh, really customize your form the way you want it. And then on top of that, you can give each of these fields custom classes, like say you wanted to replace the submit button with a different submit button, you can hit submit, give it a label, give it an ID attribute, give it a class, insert it and delete this original one. And now you could uh, go create that in your style sheet. You could go make a style for it and, and turn that button in anything you want. You could make it into a bootstrap button. You could make it into really anything. You can make it into an image submit button, all kinds of stuff. Same thing with your labels in your um, physical uh, objects like these in the brackets right this is a text area that is required that's named your name so next thing here is the mail this is where it actually goes this is where the, it actually sends it to and the first thing you need to notice here is these Do you notice that these relate to somewhere yeah these are what's set up inside your form so by default F contact form 7 will take any of your fields that are uh, editable by a user and make them available to you to include in your email to yourself. And you can include these anywhere you want. So for example, the subject, this is when the person submits the email and it comes to you to review as the website owner. So say that you wanted the subject in there, see that? So it's taking the subject that the user put into their subject line right here. The subject box is named your subject. That's what they put in the name. When they added the text box, they named it uh, your subject. And then in the mail, we see it's available as a uh, field. So when they put it in the brackets in here, when this shows up to your inbox, it's going to say Bob New Flowers, and it's going to say, hi, this is Jane, or whatever they put in their subject. So it's going to change that. And the same thing's going to happen down here in the message body. See, from whatever name they put in, and the email, and then the subject, and then whatever message they included, whatever URL they put in for their website. This is actually the name that I gave to the website one. And then the car list. If you remember, I made a, a drop down for a car list, and the name of the car list was car list. That's what I named it. So when I created a drop down menu, I named it car list. Then I put all the car options in here separated by uh, lines just like uh, entering a new line. And so that's now available to us in the mail portion to send out. So when the email comes to me, it will say, 
Jane from whatever her email is. Hi, this is Jane. Then whatever body message she had, whatever website she had, and then whatever car she picked. Say it was the Model A, which is personally my favorite car. And she put the 31 Model A in there. That's what would show up. And you can make this anything you want. For Let me give you another example. You could have wrote, and like your name, you can include it multiple times. So say her name was Jane, right? And you could have said your name and then actually dash S, or I think you can even do dash S like this. Favorite movie is and guess what we grab movie because that's what we named the text field for movie so if we grab we don't need to grab it there if we grab it here which will let us do it if we just click it we bring it down here and we paste it guess what that's going to say now when it sends us the email jane's favorite movie is back to the future or uh, terminator 2 or whatever they they choose those would be mine right it'd be like back to the future uh, Terminator 2 uh, and I, I have quite a few others too but th definitely those and that's what it would send out that's what this would look like and the last thing would be uh, messages this is when a user goes to submit this it'll give a message down here as to what has happened if it was a success if it was a failure if they didn't val if the fields didn't validate correctly if they were too long if they didn't fill out an accepted one or I mean a, I'm sorry required one or if they didn't accept your terms conditions they have all that stuff in here and you can edit whatever it says right here and save it so if, if they sent it successfully and you want to say something mm, uh, way over the top or more different than this you can put it right here and additional settings. These are customization code snippets, and when you open this link, it's gonna take you to here. We're not gonna talk about that particularly in this video. I'm actually gonna make another video right after this uh, about, uh, in part 16, is gonna be about additional settings for Contact Form 7 and redirecting Contact Form 7 and then saving uh, your information from Contact Form 7, because those are all a little more advanced, and that would take this video far too long. But um, that's what we're going to get into in the next video. And so that should give you a pretty basic rundown. Oh, one more thing, actually, before we, we go. Uh, the menu. Uh, in the top of your site, you need to add it to your menu for the Contact Us page, right? And so to do that, we go to Appearance, if it's not open, and down into Menus, and it gives you this. And we created a main menu in an earlier video and then saved it as our primary menu spot in the display location. So that's our primary menu. But if you notice over here on the left, under our WordPress pages, we now have a Contact Us. If we check that, because we created it as a page, right? So it's now a new page. And we add it to our menu, it will add it in and drag it up. But don't drag it as a sub item because you can accidentally drag it as a sub item of the home and it'll be like a dropout under home. You want it as its own item and then save the menu. And if we go back to the front end, that's still loading. Okay, good. You're going to see it pop in right here. And there it is. So when we are on our home page and we click contact, it's going to take us back to that contact page. So now we've successfully set up a Contact Us page. And all the customization that you could ever want to do is right here. And it's pretty straightforward. The messages, what, what actually shows up in your message and where it goes to. And you can set this as whatever you want. Contact over press 10 or less. That's the contact for this channel's um, email or anything you want. And so that's pretty simple. And just play around with it. Create multiple forms. You can create as many as you want. And it gives them different short codes. And you can output them wherever you want. And... Uh, and go on from there. But like I said, I think that's going to wrap us up for video 15. And uh, like usual, hit the like, hit the subscribe. I appreciate it. And leave me comments always. I really like comments and I really like reading and responding to them. So I'm really looking forward to doing that more as I go further into the series. And in the next video, we're going to work more on Contact 7 on uh, some of the more advanced things you can do with it that uh, will also um, help you out because there's some little things about it that you won't like, but these little fixes will help that. So I look forward to seeing you guys in part 16.